In the last video, you learned about seven different layers your computer uses to process communication, such as in a low message. Each layer encapsulates the lower layer until we have one big ball that your email application can understand and show you on your screen. Well, that layer one through seven ball we described is called a data packet. In this video, I want to discuss three things about the data packet. If we were to flatten a TCP data packet, we will see that it contains the following fields. Notice the actual data, such as the hello message, is at the bottom. This is also called the payload because, well, that's the whole point of the communication. And above the payload is the header. The header contains pertinent information such as the source and destination port number and a bunch of other things you will get to learn later in this course. Sometimes the data being sent is so big that it is divided into multiple headers so that it can fit through layer one, the wire. This is the reason why you see the sequence number field in the data packet chart I showed you earlier. The receiver uses this field to help piece the data fragments together when they receive it. The second thing I want you to know is that TCP packet use something called the three-way handshake. The three-way handshake is used to make sure that both the sender and the receiver agree to communicate before data is sent through the wire. Let me explain further with the same example of my hello message to you. So there's me and there's you. Sorry, I didn't have a picture of you on file. In step one, I, the sender, will send a send packet to you. The send packet is my way of saying to you, hey, I've got something I want to send you. Are you available? The send packet comes with a sequence number of my choosing. In this example, I chose a sequence number of 100. In step two, you've received the send packet, and now you will send me your own send packet. Your send packet will have a sequence number of your choosing. In this example, you send a sequence number of 20. In addition to your send packet, you will need to send me an acknowledge packet. The act packet is your confirmation to me that you've received my send packet from step one. Notice your acknowledgement will come with a number that indicate what my next sequence number should be. Because the sequence number I sent you is 100 from step one, your act packet will come with the number of 101. Upon receiving your send and act packet in step two, I will need to acknowledge your send packet with an act packet of my own in step three. I will also indicate the sequence number that I expect you to send me next. Your sequence number was 20, so I will send 21. Once the three-way handshake is complete, we can go ahead and start our session, and we can communicate back and forth and send data to each other. The third and last thing I want to tell you about data packet is the address resolution protocol, ARP. When my computer needs to send data to another device, like my hello message to you, I will need to know your IP address as well as your MAC address. Fortunately, my computer at the dot 21 IP address you see here has a temporary memory called a cache. This is where the ARP lookup table is stored. In this table is a list of IP addresses and the corresponding MAC addresses that owns the IP address. But what if your computer is new on the network and my computer hasn't cached your MAC address on my ARP lookup table yet? I know that your IP address is 192.168.5.25, but I don't know your physical address, aka your MAC address. The answer is I will send a broadcast packet using the ARP protocol. Broadcast means a copy of my packet will be sent to every device on my subnet. This request simply asks every device, who has 192.168.5.25? Every device except for yours will receive the ARP packet and drop it because the IP address does not belong to them. However, your device is a match, so your device will send me an ARP reply that says, hey, I am 192.168.5.25 and my MAC address is dd.dd.dd.dd. Then my device will update its ARP table. So next time I need to send you a message, we can just go straight to the three-way handshake to start our session. Okay, that's enough about data packets for now. Put that layer of learning in your back pocket. Next video, we will learn about Wireshark. What is it? What does it do? See you on the next one.